So I want to talk to you about uh, Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials. So we're going to define a Taylor polynomial, and we'll use the notation t sub n, um, to be. So t sub n is uh, f of a plus f prime of a over 1 factorial multiplied by x minus a plus f double prime evaluated at a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared, I'm hoping you're looking for the pattern, plus the third derivative evaluated at a divided by 3 factorial times x minus a cubed plus, and then there's a whole however many terms go in there, plus this last one will be the nth derivative of your function evaluated at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n. So a couple of things before I, I get into this. So I want you to notice, if we cover up this, right, then our we would call this the first order, because right, I go out to f prime, the single deriv first derivative, the first order Taylor polynomial, that is the linearization, right, that's the equation of the tangent line to a function f, at an x value of a. Okay. So this is a Taylor polynomial, and we the words we use are centered at x equals a. Okay. And if you remember what the, the linearization, right, what the equation of the tangent line would do, is it would approximate your function, right? So t sub n of x is approximately the same as f of x, right, as long as x is close, and close is relative, right, to a. So you can use this Taylor polynomial as a representation of f of x, as long as you're close to this place that you've, you've developed it around. Think, okay, well, why would that be useful? Well, if your function is something, and I'll use quotes, quote unquote, ugly, right, um, sometimes a polynomial is much nicer, right, because polynomials, even though it looks ugly in this form, take a deep breath, <gasps> this is all just multiplying and dividing, right, multiply, divide, add, that's all we got going on here. Okay, so, um, right, because we've been using some summation notation, how would we write this in summation notation? So I'm just using a t sub n, right? So I'm going to stop at n. So that's going to be the top of my summation. So I need another variable to be my counter, my dummy variable. So I'm going to start at i equals 0. So let's think about what those coefficients are going to be, right? So your coefficients, right? So I've got f of a. I have f prime of a over 1 factorial, f double prime of a over 2 factorial, so that'll be f of n over n factorial. So these, right, if you put it in parentheses and it's up here, that means it's that derivative. That's the notation for that derivative. And if you're worried about division by 0, good for you to be worried about it, but 0 factorial is defined to be the number 1, so we're okay with that. So here are my coefficients. And then... Right, I've got the x part, so x minus a, and then it is to the i. Oh, those were supposed to be i's. Thank you guys so much for catching that. You should have hollered louder, though. Um, the i-th derivative, and this is an i factorial because I need to stop at n. Sorry about that. Pretty soon, those are all going to be n's, and so I don't need the counter variable after that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. Anything else? Oh. Maclaurin polynomial, we call it a Maclaurin polynomial or a, po a Maclaurin series if a equals zero. All right. Um, what else do I want to say there? Okay, one more thing. The reason why, right, what we're doing when we build this Taylor polynomial is we are making the Taylor polynomial match up with your function f of x, right, at the y-intercept. Right, so it has the same, well, at the, um, they're anchored both at the same point, a, f of a, right? 
And now we're making the first derivatives match and the second derivatives match. All right, so now they have the same slope, the same concavity. We're making the third derivatives match up. Right, so the more we make these rates of change match up, right, the better that um, approximation is going to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and find one, and we're going to do a Maclaurin just because they're a little bit um, right, easier to calculate without um, using a calculator for the arithmetic part. So we're going to find um, a fifth order. So we're going to go out to the fifth derivative. We're going to find the polynomial 4 and Maclaurin. That tells me that A equals 0. And our function is e to the negative x. All right? So I'm going to slide back down. All right, so sorry, and I'm kind of screaming. Sorry about that. So we're building, right, this polynomial out to the fifth derivative. Are you ready? So I know the x parts, right? It'll just be a constant, and then I'll have x to the first, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth. So I don't really need to think about those. It's those coefficients I need to come up with. So let's just make a little table here to come up with our coefficients. Okay. So I have, I'll have my n's. I'll have that nth derivative. Let's just do it at x, right, just to get going. And then we'll evaluate it. Um, we'll find the fn at a at 0. I'll go ahead and put the 0 in. And then over n factorial, right? So this last column will be where all of the actual coefficients live. Okay, so we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so here's my f of x. So the zeroth derivative, that's just the function itself. So that'll be e to the negative x. So if I evaluate this function here at 0, that'll be 1 over, so I have 1 divided by 0 factorial. Okay, so that's a 1. Let's do the next one. So if n is 1, that's the first derivative. So the first derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Okay, so now we'll evaluate that at 0. e to the negative 0 is 1, but then I have that minus sign out front. So that's going to be negative 1 over n factorial. So 1 factorial, also 1. So negative 1 over 1 is 1. Sorry, negative 1. And it's 2, so second derivative, right? So the negative sign comes back out in front. So I have e to the negative x. Evaluate at 0, so that'll be positive 1 over n factorial. So 2 factorial, 2 times 1, that's just a 2. So now I have that coefficient, 1 half. Third derivative, right? The negative sign just, right, comes back. So my numerator will be negative 1 over 3 factorial. Right, so 3 factorial, right, 3 times 2 times 1, 6, so negative 1 sixth. Fourth derivative, the negative signs will cancel again, so my numerator will be positive 1. So the numerator is just bouncing back and forth between plus and minus 1. Denominator is 4 factorial, so that'll be 1 24th. And finally, negative e, negative x, negative 1 over, what is that? 5 factorial, negative 1 over 120. Okay, so I've got all of my coefficients, so we're just going to go ahead and write out that uh, fifth order Maclaurin. You can do a T or you can do an M. I'll do T sub 5 of X. So this is going to be, right, a function, a polynomial that we can evaluate at different X values, specifically the X values that are close to 0. Okay, so we're going to get um, 1, so that's our constant, minus 1 times x to the first, right? You wouldn't really write those, but I'm just being um, obvious, plus 1 half x squared minus 1 sixth x cubed plus 1 24th x to the 4th. And <laughs> I don't know why I wrote 12. I said 24. You heard me say 24. There we go. And then minus 1 1 20th x to the 5th. 
Okay. I said the wrong number because I was thinking about grabbing my calculator. So I'm going to pause, grab my calculator and show you how these guys match up. Okay. So here, sorry, screaming again. Here's my right McLaurin polynomial, my Taylor polynomial out to the fifth degree. Okay. So here is my calculator screen. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see it a little bit better. Oh, that is kind of nice. Okay. So I have my e to the negative x here in my y1. In my y2, I've put in that um, Taylor polynomial. I'm going to show you my window just so you can kind of, if you want to follow along, right? I'm only using this for x is near zero. So I'm not, I don't have a big x range. And then the y values are going to be small. So I just have those. So let's go ahead and see what those graphs are going to be. The first one you'll see is going to be this e to the negative x, right? So this is how our calculator does that function. All right, nice horizontal asymptote. And here in red, and you can kind of see that color, look how it's laying right across the top. And then, right, it goes away after we pass that looks like, I don't know, what did I do my x's at? Um, at 2, right, because my scale was um, a value of 1. So they di start diverging here at x equals 2. But before that, from looks like negative 2 to 2, that looks pretty darn close. 